You saw it all go down, but now it begins season six. Once again, I want to thank Collider for the incredible few seasons we had there. Thank you so much to Mark Fernandez. Thank you to Collider for having us on the channel. And now we are on the Movie Trivia Schmodown channel. You guys are here. You are watching. What a great season we are going to have. So much in store. Mark Baby Caratellis, thanks for joining us. Christian George Harloff, great to be here alongside you for another great season of Schmodown at Mayhem. Thank you for wearing your finest You're welcome. Bugle Boy Medium shirt to this very exciting matchup that features teams that we think are going to answer a lot of questions correctly on one side of the ledger you have critically acclaimed they know themselves some good movies and the Harris brothers yep. fun fact they are related they are related indeed and I will tell you though that and this match could have easily happened at Schmodown Spectacular it is going to be whoever faces the champions who are the current champions the Shire Wolves, Clark Wolf, Rachel Cushing, they are the champions. They defended the, cha the championship successfully at the Spectacular, and they needed new contenders. Well, enter critically acclaimed, three and one, three knockouts, the former movie trivia Schmodown champion of the world, William the Beast Bibiani, on that team, and they go up against the finalist of Anarchy, the tournament last year, the Harris brothers, Lon and Jonathan, very solid team. We're not predicted to go all the way to the finals, no. but did it, and now now they have a shot to get to the title match. They were a team accidentally thrown together by circumstance. Lon Harris needed a teammate. He said, hey, I, I don't know anybody that knows Moose. Oh, wait, who's that guy I grew up with? Enter his brother. Now they are a dominant, an indomitable team. Then critically acclaimed what they have brought to the table because it's William the Bibiani, sure. But Whitney Siebold also knows him some movies. He's a very respected film critic in this community. And now he is here to do some damage to the Harris family name. Well, this is the thing is William Bibiani has said it often. He was bumped about anarchy. They, they were on a victory road there, critically acclaimed, to get themselves a number one contender shot and get a title shot last year. Enter Mike Kalinowski, who then says, all right, anarchy, guess what, Whitney? You're going to be with Mark Hurick. And the Beast, you're going to be with Matt Nost. And they didn't get to play with each other. This is the first time they played together in months. So, And they had a big break the year before that. So they are ready to make an impact. But if the Harris brothers have anything to say with it, they'll be the ones. But they had a lot to say. There was a lot of smack talk. There was a lot of gibberish that I didn't understand. Yep. Here we go. Whitney and I critically acclaimed three wins Three knockouts. Look, the Lords of Chaos took over at that point and separated us and made sure that our combined powers could not blast a hole through everything. The Harris brothers. What's the story behind that? They're brothers. They're Christian. brothers. They are the hence the Harris brothers. Lon Harris reaches out and gets his brother, another professor, to go ahead and compete with. His, name, his name's John. John. Lon and, and John. Yeah. You gotta love that family sense of humor. The Harris brothers are back to reclaim our title, but the Harris brothers. I mean, these miscreants, they come along, they think, oh, I won this match, now give me my belt. But they haven't done the rigorous work. They lack the discipline. Certainly, we have proven ourselves. We have taken out, uh, please take the cannoli. We took out that team. We took out the odd couple named for one of Neil Simon's uh, lesser work. So we took out both of those teams before our match against Who's the Boss. Critically acclaimed, the Harris brothers, face to face to face to face. Knowledge against knowledge, but better knowledge. These are film critics. Journalism is dead. The academia is where they should be. Your team is called critically acclaimed. Your team is a description of our team. They say that they know everything there is to know about sort of the high art. That's our job. That's us. How many Kaneto Shindo films have you seen? How many Jorg Bukerite films have you seen? We are and have proven ourselves to be the top team in this entire league. Together, we are nigh unstoppable. And not bad looking. Dr. Billy and Bibiani and Mr. Whitney Sebold prepare to be comically ashamed.
you see what I was talking about. They, I mean, you get the Harris brothers talking smack about critically acclaimed, critically acclaimed, saying that they that the Harris brothers think that they're smarter than they really are. It's it's this is a smack talk. This is a number one contender match, and they both want those belts. It's a question of chemistry here today, Christian, because critically acclaimed, are they going to be able to ride right back in the same saddle after all these many months off from competing with each other? The Harris brothers, they're kind of like those twins from G.I. Joe. The other one feels the pain, right. even though they're far away. Right. Is that going to factor into the match? Probably not, but if it gets physical, you just don't know. All right, here's some notable accomplishments from both teams. Critically acclaimed, they have three victories. They have three knockouts, and they are they have the former movie trivia showdown champion on the team. The Harris brothers, also finalist in the tournament. They have beaten the odd couple. They beat Take the Cannoli. They have a lot of notable wins here, and they're looking for a new shot. And they are one of the few teams in the league that sleep in bunk beds. True. All right. Well, with that, Mark, I'm going to get going. How about you? I am prepared. Christian, let's do it. Number one contender match for the championship against the Shirewolves. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the movie trivia showdown. <laughs> Introducing first, with a record of three wins, one defeat, and three knockouts, Whitney, the beauty, Seibold, and the former movie trivia showdown champion of the world, William the Beast, Bibiani, critically Finally, Are you guys okay? Uh, you right on set. It? it was a bit of a walk. Looks exhausting. It was a bit of a walk. You made it. Well, congratulations. Uh, I'm glad that you made it. It wasn't just them making it either. William the Bibiani has fans in the crowd. They even brought a sign to support oh, their I like hero. That. I like William That's the Bibiani. Right. All right. All right. It's my sister. Oh. <laughs> and <laughs> their opponents. With a record of three wins, one defeat, and one knockout. Ultimate Schmodown finalists, Lon and Jonathan, the Harris Brothers. Oh, there you go. Appears to be Lon. Oh, he's doing the death point. Oh, there he is. Oh, Christian, it's a seventh seal, seventh sign. Oh, I see. Oh, goodness. Categories. They're bringing categories. What are they going to do? That is just like the classic movie. <laughs> right, Instead right. of just they're playing scatter boys. I'll say it for these more. guys call themselves film snobs. They just remade a millennial version of the Seventh Seal. I call foul. Oh, oh well, you're talking that's, okay. all, that's not very snobby. Uh, That's very mainstream of you. I think it's educators. It's about making these classic films resonate for a younger generation. <laughs> then you show them Bill and Ted's bogus journey. This is the most interesting smack talk I've ever seen. I just here. wanted to wear this costume so you can't see my tells. All right. Well, <laughs> here we go now as the number one contender match begins. Mark, round number one. How's that go? You got to love how they acted out a scene, and then you have two film critics giving them criticism. Mm -hmm. In round number one, His the field is going to hear eight 
eight questions from eight different movie trivia categories. Each question is worth one point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. Although this is a team match, keep in mind, in round number one, you are to rely only on your own intellect to get the correct answer. We will ask the question. Once we do, you have about 15 seconds to write down your best attempt at an answer on the whiteboard in front of you. Once we ask you by name to reveal your answer, please say your best attempt into the microphone at the same time you hold the whiteboard up to the camera and also allow us up here on the answer desk to witness in all its glory your possibly correct answer. I will remind each team you have three usages of the JTE rule throughout the duration of the match. If you're not sure you heard a question correctly, you need to buy yourself some time, use a JTE rule. Each team also has one challenge to be administered when they see fit. All right, so with that, Harris Brothers, are you ready? Too often students don't listen to all the directions, so I just want you guys to know that we definitely did. Okay. Thank you, John. Critically acclaimed. Are you ready? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're good. We're not pretentious. We just want to play the game. Let's get ready to schmoot out! There you go, guys. First question's an action adventure. Which The Walking Dead actor played government agent Harvey Russell in 2018's Rampage? You know, it's kind of like a running joke last year, but I, I do think Jonathan's still my favorite Harris brother. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's Clear, nice. Clearly better than Lon, although oh, I do enjoy Five, Lon. four, three. Repeat the question. Which The Walking Dead actor played government agent Harvey Russell in 2018's Rampage? Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Harris brothers? Uh, sorry, Lon. It is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Yes, it is. Whitney? I wrote down Norman Reedus. Okay. Uh, John? I wrote down uh, what he likes to be called, grimy. Oh, <laughs> and, and Beast. Uh, I also had Jeffrey Dean Morgan. So you go, tie game. Okay. Tie game. But critically acclaimed, that's just one day to you. Okay. Tied at one apiece. All right, here we go. Next question. Next question in the world of animated. These are movies that have been drawn by hand or more likely on a computer. Your question is, when Blue, a domesticated macaw from small town Minnesota, meets the fiercely independent Jewel, he takes off on an adventure with her in what film? It's a mouthful. Yeah. Animated question. Don't, I hope they don't repeat that one. Five. <laughs> it's a long time. Four. Three. Two. One. Pens down. Whitney. Rio. Yes, it is. Jonathan. Rio. Yep. Beast. Rio. Yep. I also said Rio. Rio, there and you she go. dances on the sand. I, I gotta tell you, I like what William the Beast Viviani tried to do there. I like what he pretended it was a long title and just did a lot of scribbling. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> I was out. I really, Madagask, wait a minute. Yeah, I really enjoyed that. Said it's a long title. I like that. A little bit of gamesmanship I liked by it. the Beast. Smart. All right, here we go. Next, next question. Dramas. Who stars as former slave hunter turned Jesuit missionary in 1986's The Mission? You ever have Mission uh, tortilla chips? You get them at fancier grocery stores. Yeah. It just says Mission. I know what they are. They are good stuff. Good for you. Put them Five, in some queso. Four, mm -mm -mm. three. What's queso? Two, one. Pens down, please. And Jonathan. Figured it was 50-50, I guessed Liam Neeson. That's incorrect. <laughs> Robert De Niro? That is correct. Lon? I also had Robert De Niro. And Whitney. Oh, I wrote Jeremy Irons. Incorrect. Mm. So still tie game there. Okay. The Next guy. question. Game. No one wants to no, grab for hold of the I was match just yet. Liam Neeson. Gentlemen, your next question is in the world of 80s movies. This is as in the 1980s. Your question is, which 1980s musical contains the following quote? What professional rides a motorcycle and wears a black leather jacket? Stumped. I, uh, I have a black leather jacket. I would I hate have, to see that. I also have a light oh. jean jacket. I like the jean jacket. I'm wearing five. Today. Can you repeat Four. the question? Yeah, I certainly Who can. Who was that? Lon? Yeah. Okay. In yeah, 1980s movies, which 1980s musical contains the following quote? What professional rides a motorcycle and wears a black leather jacket? Five. Four. Three. Two. One beast. Was it Grease Two? No, it was not. Ah. Lon, I believe it was Little Shop of Horrors. That is correct. Ah. Whitney. I wrote Footloose. And Jonathan. We were on the same page for once. I guess Grease Two. Oh wow! So the Harris brothers. Ah. Yeah, Harris. So please miss yeah. the next one. I'll next miss question. Miss, can, can you? Yeah, be cool. All right, here we go. I'll work on next it. Next question. Fantasy slash sci-fi. Which 1984 film starring Emilio Estevez and Harry Dean Stanton 
follows a bunch of wacky characters trying to find a Chevy Malibu with radioactive aliens hidden in the trunk. God, I, I feel like I just seen the whole movie. When that happens, <laughs> you know, these, you get these radioactive aliens. Yeah. Again, that's why you gotta Five, really vet ET. Four, three. Is I like he a botanist? You, I just like when you talk to yourself. Is he a botanist? Two, Is one, he not? Pens down, lawn. Uh, most people spend their lives trying to get out of insane situations, but the Repo Man spends his life trying <laughs> to get out of insane situations. Correct. Correct. Repo Man. Ordinary people. I hate him. Repo Man. You got it. Uh, uh, Jonathan. I didn't get it. I put men at work. Oh, oh. at least. Oh. Wow. Okay, but I did have Repo Man. Wow. So we're critically good. acclaimed. Repo back man. to tie the game here. Hey, we're back. All tied up. All right. Tied it all up. Here we go. Next category here. Next category is comedy. In the world of comedy, Sorry, it's Christian, question. do the laugh. No, you got it. <laughs> Chuck, Chuck. <laughs> Who directed Clueless? You don't know, would that mean that you are? Not necessarily. Not necessarily. It's just a tough question for to, some. Try to go there. Five, four, three, two, one. Whitney. Amy Heckerling. Yes, sir. Jonathan. Amy Heckerling. Yep, Beast. Amy Heckerling. And Lon. Amy Heckerling. Wow. Lon's still perfect. Lon's still perfect. Lon could get a bonus question asked just to him. And if I may say, out of all the competitors I've ever seen write something on a whiteboard, Whitney, by far the best penmanship. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. And that, he gets a bonus point for that, right? No, not yet. He gets next extra next season. in my class. Yes. Good. Yes. There you go. Next season. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. All right. All right. Horror slash thriller. Yeah. Shh, quiet over there. One fan. Name the movie from this synop synopsis. Name the movie from the synopsis. A woman who lives in her darkened old family house with her two photosensitive children becomes convinced that the home is haunted. <laughs> you know what I love is when we're clearly on camera and you decide it's time to take a sip out of your empty cup with your straw. It's I done. am going to speak with Alex well, and say, Christian, no more liquids five, during the match. Four. It's better than staring into the ether. You Three, are an animal. Two. One. <laughs> Pens down, please, and Jonathan. I didn't know who directed this at first, and then I went, aha, the others. Yeah, that's right. And Beast. <laughs> uh, the, the others is the correct yes. answer. Yes, I also put the others. And perfect penmanship. Uh, the otters. God, yes. look otters. at that. <laughs> Just hold that up there for it's a so second. Good. Nice. All right. Yes. Well, look, yes. so good. Well, look at this. And everything. Well, look at this. Lon, if he hits this question, he will all, himself will answer a question. You'll have a perfect round. You'll have the time for the for the bonus question. That's it. Right? Miss. Don't blow Miss. it. Noonan. Your Concentrate. last question. Steve Perry. I'm encouraging him. <laughs> is a Patreon question. And this comes to us courtesy of, I love saying this guy's name, Jake Hammer. The Hammer's back. Woo! Jake Hammer. Loyal movie tribute show down Patreon. Check out the Jake. Patreon today and select which tier is right for you. Maybe one day I'll say your name like I just did. Jake the Hammer. Jake wanted a question in the category of new releases. These are releases that are somewhat new. And your question to the field. How dare he? What 2018 film do Blake Lively and Henry Golding play husband and wife? <laughs> well, the we'll hammer's fun. back. The yeah. hammer. It is the tie game here. If they all get it, it'll be tied, but Lon will have a chance if he hits it to take the lead. Five, four, three, two, one. Beast. It's one of the best movies of that or any year. A simple favor. <laughs> it is Lon. I also have a simple Perfect favor. Perfect round for Lon Whitney. A simple favor. And... Jonathan? I wrote a serious thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. I do a simple and serious. So that sounds now, like a Joan Hart romantic comedy from 2001. So they lost their lead, but Lon has a chance to tie the game here if he hits this question. Lon, you don't have to write this down. This is just for you. Here you go. Here's your bonus question. Lon, name the two actors who have played Rooster Cogburn. Uh, that would be Jeff Bridges and John Wayne. For one point. Tie game okay. here. Tie game. There he goes. And now we get, wow, what a match this has been yeah, so far. And we get into round number two, the wheel rounds. Mark, how's two go? In round number two, each team gets a spin at the wheel of doom, fate, and for one lucky team, justice. Each slice on that there wheel corresponds to a movie trivia category that contains four questions therein. Each question is worth two points. However, if you're not sure of the answer, the teams can ask for multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which is the correct answer. You answer that one correctly, you get yourself one point as opposed to two if you get it on your lonesome. Keep in mind, both teams, all competitors, there is stealing available. 
in round number two. So be aware, on the wheel, we have a bevy of Patreon things to celebrate, Christian, because that wheel is sponsored with a slice from one of our Schmodown patrons, and that slice is Jim Henson. It's a new slice. We got a, we got a Henson year. slice. So if we land on Jim Henson, we will say that patron's name. Thank you very much. And the wheel itself is also sponsored. And for that, we're going to give a big shout out right now to Mr. John Layton. Thank you, John, for Woo! sponsoring the wheel. And his sponsored wheel slices today are James so Bond handsome. and Natalie Portman. Wow. I do not believe she has been in a Bond film. All right, well, yet. Yet, because critically acclaimed likes to answer questions, maybe they get to go first, but that is all in the hands of the Harris brothers. You are the favorites, and we're a tied game, so would you like to spin first or defer to your critical opponents? I believe we'll spin first. Okay, okay. please spin from the wheel, not the pitch. Lon Harris, going to grab it from the husk. That's a good spin by Lon, I like that spin. Question is, what, see, Lon made a big mistake last tournament. He was confident in a particular thing, but was, was trying to appease his no. brother, and they spun away, and I think that's no, what whammy. happened. You want them yeah, to I mean, that's, oh, that's whammy. the thing with the wheel. Oh. If this was, uh -oh. press your luck. Uh oh. This could, this could be, be big. Classics. Oh, classics. Oh. They're going to keep it. All right, Aqua Classics. All right, so, classics. classics. This is the, now, can they put their money where their we'll mouth see. is here? So here we go. Classic. Well, it depends on how classic the classics are. <laughs> well, right. let's see. We take issue with what you deem a classic. All right. Well, here you go. Here we go. All right, guys. Classics. Six questions. What 1940s drama starring Gregory Peck, Dorothy McGuire, John Garfield, and Celeste Holm concerns a journalist posing as a Jewish man to research an expose on anti-Semitism in New York City? Uh, Five. All right. Uh, can we have four? We'll say the gentleman's agreement. That's correct. <laughs> All right. Wow. They almost went multiple choice. Yeah. They end up getting it right. <laughs> All right. Here we go. What 1950s film starring Bing Crosby, Frank Sinatra, and Grace Kelly was based on the play The Philadelphia Story? Five. Four. Can we get multiple choice? Yes, you can. A, riding high. B, the country girl. C, high society. D, going my way. We'll say high society. For one point, that's correct. Okay. They know they're classic so far, yeah. Christian. All right, question three. Who played the female lead alongside Bing Crosby and Bob Hope in 1942's The Road to Morocco? <laughs> Five. We'll do multiple choice in this one as well. A, Dorothy Lamour. B, Rosemary Clooney. C, Ingrid Bergman. D, Joan Fontaine. Rosemary Clooney. It's incorrect for the steal. Dorothy Lamour. Correct for one point. Wow. Yep. It's a big steal for number three. Right? Number three. This is number four. Okay. How many times does Scarlett O'Hara get married and Gone with the Wind? <laughs> By today's standards, too many. <laughs> Five. Three. Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Didn't need multiple right. choice for that one. They go right. back up by four points. This is number, number five. Actually sucks. Number five. Not this a big fan. Boy, Here we go. Man. Orson Welles plays which Shakespearean character in 1965's Chimes at Midnight? Falstaff. Correct for two points. Who else would he play? Last question. Othello, but well, last, <laughs> last question. Who played Maria Nunes in 1961's West Side Story? Yeah. Five? Four? We'll go multiple choice. Is it A, Julie Andrews? No. B, Natalie Wood? Yeah. C, Audrey Hepburn? D, Barbara Streisand? It's Natalie Wood. For one point. So seven point lead here. Oh, just okay. for it. Now critically acclaimed has a chance to spin. Now they could have a great strong category here or they might hit something that they don't want. But we'll see. The Beast is going to spin by the wheel. And here we go. Thank you. Yes, yeah, seven points. You figure the editor, not an insurmountable lead when it comes to teams. Yeah. Because you have six questions and you can confer with your 
teammate who also knows a lot about movies. So I think uh, critically acclaimed sitting in pretty good position. They are. And William Bibiani, also the managing editor of the Schmodown website. TriviaSD.com, that one. 90s. 90s. 90s it is. All right. You're going to go with 90s. You're going to go with 90s. the decade 90s of the 1990s. Where is it? I don't see it. There it is. You don't need to see it. You just need to hear it. All right. Critically acclaimed, your first question in the world of the 1990s that includes Cineburst Gum and Crystal Pepsi. Ooh. Your first of six questions I have a is, with that. <laughs> what comedic actor played sound engineer Gary Dixon in Anaconda? Five, four, three. Yeah, Owen Wilson. That's two points. Yeah. Nice, beast hits a great. <laughs> Two points. Your next question, once again, sticking in the world of the 90s. In the film Wayne's World, hmm. what song is Wayne denied from playing in the guitar show? <laughs> Stairway, to Stairway to Heaven. It's no stairway denied, but they get two points for it. It's a three point it's game. It's like people only do things because they get paid. <laughs> it's really just sad. Really sad. All right, gentlemen. Next up, who plays Amy March, the youngest of the March girls, in 1994's Little Women? Two different actors play her. Do you want the younger or the older? Younger. Look, it's says, Kirsten Dunst and Samantha Mathis. It's, <laughs> thank you very much. Okay. I know my little women. We're not pompous. We just want to play a game. That <laughs> <laughs> was before they asked the Little Women question. Right, right, I go. would quickly like to get the Harris Brothers' thoughts on the 94 Little Women film that was based on the, co the classic novel. Here we go. I mean, if one must watch the more recent version because one lacks the patience and dedication to look up the old one, sure. The, the Catherine Hepburn one is better. I yeah. prefer yeah. the late Chris Farley version on Saturday Night Live. <laughs> <laughs> All right. A fine example. And we move back into the world of Greta the 90s. Blah, 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 Your next question is... I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Which 90s film is about three of the most popular girls at Reagan High accidentally killing the prom queen when a kidnapping goes horribly wrong? Jawbreaker. It is, in fact, Jawbreaker. Yeah. Which is nothing yeah. at all like Heather's. Two questions left. <laughs> they yeah, take totally the lead. Different. Totally different from Heather's. Yeah. Your penultimate question in round number two. In the 1993 thriller Falling Down, who plays the wife of Michael Douglas's defense, Beth Trevino? Oh, who was the one? No. Five. Multiple choice. Is it A, Barbara Hershey, B, Tuesday Weld, C, Sharon Stone, or D, Rachel Ticotin? Barbara Hershey. Barbara Hershey. Give him a point. Yeah. Wow. So look at that. So we are now <laughs> two point lead here by yeah, Critical no, Acclaim. All right. Your last question in. The world of the 90s. And boy, what a 90s question this one is. For two oh, points. Dudical. What real grunge band were members of Cliff's band in the 1992 Cameron Crowe film Singles? Oh, Jesus. Was it Pearl Jam? Pearl Jam. Yeah. Okay. Pearl Jam. They're still yeah. alive. Wow. Yeah. Look at that. What a round by Critics yeah. of Acclaim. Very impressive. Yeah, they yeah, really yeah. worked together as a team. Got themselves a four-point lead here, and now we get into the third round. Four points. We've seen teams come back from it before, but that's a very solid lead. Mark, how does round three work? It's incredible to see the comeback critically acclaimed had, the Harris brothers, yep. one you. of them pitching a perfect <laughs> round once, but now Good we have so an even flow into round number three uh, like in that. each. <laughs> Each team will give us a series of three numbers. These numbers can range from 1 to 20. Each number you give us is going to correspond to a different movie trivia category up here at the answer desk. The first question is worth two points. Your next one is worth three points. Your last one, should we make it that far, is worth five points. Now, keep in mind, we will tell you the category that you selected at random for your two-pointer. And at that point, the team itself must decide which member is going to answer that one individually. You may not confer with your teammate. And then for the three-pointer, the opposite teammate will answer that one by themselves. You may only confer with your teammate for the five-point question. All right. Now, with cool. that being said, with that being said, the critically acclaimed is in the lead now. Three numbers from one to 20. Uh, pick one. Uh, four. Fifteen. Nineteen. Four, fifteen, and nineteen for Acclaimed and the Harris Brothers. Six. Take uh, nine. 
10. 6, 9, and 10. All right, so the Harris brothers will start One, first two, three, four, here five. with number six. Number six will begin for the Harris <laughs> brothers, and they will have to choose in the category of fantasy sci-fi. Fantasy sci-fi, who would like to, who would like to take it? I'll take this one. All right, here you go. All right, category of fantasy sci-fi. Who provides the voice of the monster in 2016's A Monster Calls? <laughs> Five. Vin Diesel. For Liam Neeson. Neeson. Liam Neeson. Yeah. All right. It is a tree. Liam Neeson, it is a tree. It is. All right. So here's here's the next question here for the Harris brothers. The three pointer Lon will get here. They were going to have to hit their three and their five here. So here's the three in the category of nine. Nine, which is Angelina Jolie. Angelina Jolie. Okay. Here you go, Lon. In which film does Angelina Jolie play Colin Farrell's mother? <laughs> Uh, is it <laughs> five? Is it a winter's tale? For Alexander. Yeah. Alexander. So Alexander. if they do not hit this, critically acclaimed will have their fourth consecutive TKO by Ooh. win here if they hit it. Yeah. Here we go. Harris Brothers need to hit this. This is category 10. Category 10, war movies. War movies. Here you go, guys. Are you ready to go? You can confer on this one. Yes. All right. Okay. Name two of the other soldiers, you need the actors' names here, who get pinned down with Mark Wahlberg in Lone Survivor. Five. Four, We're going to take three. a wild guess and say Wes Bentley and Ben Foster. And your winner! TKO, their fourth TKO. That's got to be a record, I think. The Harris brothers leave it all out there on the field. They got Ben Foster. We would have accepted either Emil Hirsch or Taylor Kitsch. They went with Wes Bentley. Not quite enough to force the hand of critically acclaimed. And they are back in the winner's circle again. And what a formidable team that they are going into the rest of this season. They are one to keep your eye on. Oh, absolutely. Well, now they've got a date with Destiny as they face off against the Shire Wolves. Clark Wolf and Rachel Cushing. TKO, I do not see in their future with that match, but I do see a big title match now. When will it happen? Sometime in February, sometime in March, but it will happen. Critically acclaimed versus the Shire Wolves for the belts. Bibiani has the opportunity now to become the third man in history to win both the team belts and the singles championship. The critically acclaimed kids, they move on to continue to spin the black circle. Meanwhile, the Harris brothers will be listening to the song Black on a Yellow Lead Better. I'm still referencing Pearl Jam songs. Well, now we're going to talk to Emma Fife, who's standing with both critically acclaimed and the Harris Brothers. What's up, Movie Trivia Schmodown fans? Your team lead commissioner, Emma Fife, here with the Harris Brothers, Jonathan, Lon. You put up a good fight today, I have to say. I think we answered all the questions that were about, uh, you know, movies that people should be expected to know about. I don't know, The Lone Survivor. I'm not sure who's asking about these recent films. I, I had expected if we were going to talk about war films, it might be Hell is for Heroes, the classic Don Siegel adventure, but oh, oh next time, perhaps. No, today was the Bing Crosby showdown. And yes. I'm not sure that is something I want to be a part of. I see. Okay. Well, I guess that Bing Crosby doesn't make your list of noteworthy actors from the past whom people should invest time in the seeing their films. The is classic, not noteworthy actors from the past. I see. Mm. Point, point taken. I would hate to be Bing Crosby right now because I just leveled him. <laughs> he is rolling over in his grave, I guess. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Bing got dinged. <laughs> Lon, you had a perfect round one, though. I mean, you know, you, you like to, to say not so nice things about films of the present day, but you clearly know a thing or two about new releases because that was included in there. I, I mean, I get by. I have, I have to relate to young students and inspire them. So it is important that I learn about your, your Rios and what have you. Yes, and we already discussed the uh, overabundance of Bing Crosby in your round two there. But then what happened in round three? 
you know, in round three, we, you, you only get a few questions, you only get a few chances to really strike. Uh, and, and you know, we got, we got a monster calls. I think Jonathan was expecting if we were going to talk about monsters, it might be from Hammer films or the classic Universal period. Right. But, but fair, fair enough. But, you know, I think we're just recent films that we just haven't seen as much, haven't studied with the level of depth that we've studied, say, the, the classics of the French New Wave. When you have a cartoon tree in your film and he is not careening through space, I don't know if you can expect anyone to know it. You did it. You did answer a tree-related actor, which I thought was very good. It was stuck in my head, and I thought there is absolutely no chance that Vin Diesel would voice multiple trees in 2018. <laughs> I'd actually but, like to see I mean, a Monster who knows? Calls. I'd like to see a Monster Calls redubbed with uh, Vin Diesel's voice. I, I mean, maybe Just saying Vin family. Diesel has like family. tree specialist on his resume nowadays. I mean, I don't know. I haven't seen Vin Diesel's personal like his special skills on his resume. Lon and I are family. This don't, won't break us apart. Hey, kid, don't be sad about your dead mom. Well, it's my impression of Vin Diesel in Monster. That was the, it, I, I, no, that was my I impression of Liam Neeson as a tree oh, in sure, Monster yeah. Calls. Sure. Now, Nailed you guys, it. you know, you're a great team. I love having you in the league. I love seeing you out there. But you've hit some rough spots as of late. How are you feeling about the future of the Harris Brothers in the Schmodown? Uh, I do not know much about film. <laughs> So, you know, that's always Great. something that's yeah. always something you want to deal with. Film. Contemporary. Listen, film knowledge is not necessarily That's not necessarily uh, what this is about and I true. know that going in. Yeah. Um, I mean, Josh Makuga's made a whole career in the showdown on not really knowing that much drinking. about film. You should start drinking. <laughs> Well, maybe I will after this <laughs> anyway, unrelated. Yeah. Oh. But I am going to, uh, regardless, I think there may be a future for the Harris Brothers, but regardless, I plan to come in very strong, return to the singles lead, my former glory in the singles lead, and specifically, I wish to challenge Mr. William Artemis Bibiani to a singles one-on-one -on -one match following our showdown today. I think that's a fair challenge. The gauntlet well, has been thrown, Mr. Bibiani. Hey, Whitney, you want to go to that yard house across the street? Maybe we can get some onion rings and a beer or something? I highly recommend <laughs> the uh, cheese curds there. They're really mm. quite delicious. Really? The yeah. cheese curds? Yeah, it's just like fried cheese. Do they have whey? Really can't go wrong. <laughs> no, they have I've no never way. You know, I've never asked about whey, but uh, when later at the yard house, we'll ask about it. But, it's uh, a whey-free establishment. Yes. First gluten, then whey. <laughs> They're slowly removing ingredients. I'd hate to be whey right now, because we just nailed it. <laughs> Bing! Go away, way! <laughs> we'll be right back with Critically Acclaimed. Oh, 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 ah. oh I'm still alive. I'm yeah. I guess we're just opening up on a Critically Acclaimed's victory cheer song. Yeah, we're, 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 we're pretty happy. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you had a very impressive match, I have to say. I, uh, I also have to say that. Yeah, I thought we did really good. Like, I was like, we, I didn't, I, we didn't have to, what's four knockouts for us? It's that like, is that four the, TKOs. Is that the number one? I know the Patriots had a lot, but it's up there, right? It's pretty good. It's you know, definitely you know, whether, records. Whether or not we're setting a record, it's still something to be darn proud of. Right. I absolutely agree with that sentiment. I mean, you know, I think that people sometimes forget about you and that you proved today that you who should could, not be forgotten. Who could forget this face? A lot of people can forget this face. We disappear as a team for months upon months and every time we come back, we come roaring back, showing everybody, I, I, you know, I'm looking forward to our next match, but with our luck, it'll be in nine months, so who the hell knows? Uh, but uh, it's great, it's really, really cool. I'm glad we were able to come roaring back in this season, start off strong, who knows what happens next? Well, I mean, I know what happens next. You guys are now number one contenders, so you're going to be going up against the Shire Wolves for the belt. I know, and it's really cool talking about that with you because you have no biases whatsoever. You have no no preconceived notions, nothing like... Look, you saw what the Shire Wolves have done for themselves. They are the toughest team, I think, in the history of the league. So we are, I, I'm gonna say this right now, we are honored to, to face the Shire Wolves. Uh, we, we hope to do well against the Shire Wolves. It would be neat if we won, but you know, let's be honest here, there's no shame in losing against the Shire Wolves, right? We can hold our own against the Shire Wolves. Yeah, and it'll be and, fun. And down at that moment when the score is tied and we're holding the staff, we can just yell at that big fiery monster. What is Gandalf yell? What was it? Oh, Jesus Christ, we're gonna lose. <laughs> oh, when he like yells at the Balrog? You yeah. shall not pass! 
I'm honored that it's going to be the two of you. I think you guys are very worthy competitors. And Clark and Rachel, as you say, are definitely some of the strongest players that the league has ever seen. And the two of them together are a force to be reckoned with. And I think that you guys are a force that, that, uh, that'll be nice to see it going up against their force. Wee! <laughs> and uh, I, I just want to see what we're going to do for our intros because they're good. Yeah. They got, they got, hey, I don't have an award. Yeah, that's they got, true. They got an award. I don't, have, I don't have nothing. Maybe this is your opportunity. Be That'd be nice. Now, Guy. now uh, William Bibiani, I have to say, unless there is a, a William Artemis Bibiani, or was it Aloysius? It was Bib Artemis. Artemis it was Artemis yeah. Bibiani. Uh, the hotel. You, uh, you've been issued a challenge from one professor, Lon Harris. May I, may I borrow the mic for a second? I have a message for Lon Spadoinkle Harris. Lon. Uh, yeah, maybe. I don't know. We'll talk to Christian, see if we can schedule that. Oh, well, really that was a, a, a lukewarm yes. Bro, but bro. I, okay, taking it as a yes one way or another. Well, uh, congratulations to both of you. Uh, Thank you. Thank Whitney, you very much. Bibbs, critically acclaimed. I look forward to seeing you guys go up against the Shire Wolves. Yeah! Now well, back to you, Mark and Christian. Might be going down, maybe. Whee! All right, so look, as we saw in the interview, Lon and Jonathan both a little upset by the the match itself, but Lon saying he's ready to play singles, ready to keep playing teams, as is Jonathan. They're ready to keep going, and they have more matches ahead of them and, for sure. And a job well done, not just from a question-answering standpoint, but uh, technically, what a great intro that was, bringing oh, yeah. Scattergories to the seventh seal, a beautiful melding of the new and the old world. But it's critically acclaimed, who is very excited as they speak to Emma Five inside of the uh, that interview there. That's how good Emma Fife is, though. She's a neutral announcer, and she's asking the questions because now as the commissioner of this league. That's right. She is the commissioner of the team's it, league. She's so, yeah. someone that you can actually trust, yeah. and you guys can go to TriviaSD.com right now for all the latest and greatest in the world of the movie Trivia Shmoda. You get some cool factoids, updates, and you can buy tickets to upcoming live events. And check out the movie Trivia Shmoda on Patreon. Select which tier is right for you. That's how you can watch all these fancy live events that we love putting on for you. And don't forget, on February 23rd, I announced it as a spectacular the first Schmodown Throwdown. That's right, two matches in one live streaming event on February 23rd. We'll be doing it from here. You guys, if you're at the $10 patron, uh, t Patreon tier, you can get it, or you can get it at a one-time fee to watch the t inner geekdom title match between Mike Kalinowski and the winner of Rachel Cushing and Adam Lavin. It's going to be a barn burner there for sure and a lot of great movie trivia schmodown action in the meantime. That is Christian George Harloff. I am merely Mark Ellis. Go listen to some grunge and if that doesn't do it for you, how about you get some Van Halen in you? You see the shirt? Oh, that's good. This looks exactly like my Uncle Herman's grill. I don't know what it's doing over here, but this is definitely his grill. I can, I can probably sell it on eBay for a couple of hundred bucks. No, At least I'm thinking. no, it wasn't your table. Bibs, it wasn't your, how did you even get my number? How did you get my number? No, delete it, delete it. I gotta call you back. Well, well, well. Mr. Finstock, Mr. Gucci. Hey, man. How are you, my friend? Yeah. It's so good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too, man. Look, mm -hmm. brother, what's your deal? You know what my deal is. I've been mm -hmm. wanting you since day one. I tried to recruit you when I was with that idiot on action, but right now, I want you, me, I want to take over the 2019 guy and Gucci, baby. I can see the lights. I can see the billboards right now. No, that rings. Like, it looks like Dirk Diggler and Neon. Yeah, that's right. But I gotta tell you, I'm not your guy, guy. I'm not your guy. I got two guys right now. They're gonna beat two girls. I just don't need another guy. Guy. <laughs> okay. Cute, that was real cute. I like that, that was yeah. good. I knew you were gonna do some stupid thing like that, so you know what? I got a little surprise for you too, guy. Gooch, guess what? Hey! Hey! I got a little friend here for hey. you, man. See, this moron. Oh, really? come on now. Ah. That's my wig. This is your JTE trial wig, bitch. I knew it was. <laughs> Well, okay, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. Oh, wait. You got lighter fluid in there? <laughs> you know, no, I don't. Oh, wait. It proves you burned my mask. I have oh. lighter fluid. Ooh. What, what, I burned your you what? I my fucking mask. What are you talking about? You know what? 
You know, people have been talking to me about, I don't know what you mean. No, I know what you, I know what it is. You burnt my mask. I saw it. How would I have burnt I saw the mask? Smoke down spectacular how would I, how Look, would look, I look, look, boys, 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 boys. Nobody has that structure. We can figure this out. You're with this guy? Of course I am. Okay. And you should join us. Look, you guys can figure all this out later, but imagine. Imagine what the three of us could do to this league. We could set this whole place on fire. Or tackle everybody. It's like what Beavis used to say. Fire, fire, and fire. And fire. fire. And Think and about it. We are fire. That's who what the kids say. That, who, who let you out of that room we locked you in? <laughs> I don't know. The you're same people that probably let me into your you're house. Gonna, hey, you're going to drop this guy in two months. Join us. Hmm. Come on, man. Join the dark side. Join the great side. You're with two has You're with the 50 year old guy and the weaker half of team action. Come All we to can do the is dark. You know All we can do is right. win. You're probably we can right. just be better, right? <sighs> Come on, All dude. Right. Maybe you'll get your face back. Hey! We knew he was gonna do that shit anyway. Yeah, well, you know what? Let's set some shit on fire. Have I told you how much I enjoy that you burn everything to the ground? I love it. This year, we're gonna be tackling people, we're gonna be setting them on fire, my friend. It's gonna be amazing. What's up, Schmodown fans? Frank here, and it is time for your Schmodown Breakdown. And the winner! The first team match of the new league year, and it's a number one contenders match between the Harris Brothers and Critically Acclaimed. We haven't seen Critically Acclaimed play as a team since June of last year when they defeated Modoc. And the Harris Brothers, we haven't seen them play since their brutal defeat to Who's the Boss when they were KO'd in last year's tournament final. But to start the season, Lon Harris wasn't wasting any time as he scores a perfect first round for the second time in Team League play. This only helped them keep the game tied as Jonathan Harris scored three points in the round. Getting into the second round action, the Harris brothers stick with Classics and earn a total of eight points. They had to go to multiple choice three times and they gave up a one point steal on their third question. Rosemary Clooney. It's incorrect for the steal. Dorothy Lamar. Correct for one wow. point. Wow. As for Bibbs and Whitney, they stick with 90s and go a perfect 6 for 6 for 11 points and a 4 point lead heading into the final round. For the Harris Brothers, their woes continued as they went 0 for 3 and a final score of 24 to 20, which means critically acclaimed will now face off against the Shire Wolves for the title. Going inside the numbers, critically acclaimed put up their second best accurate performance to date. They answered 83%. And looking at the second round play for them, they put up career best by hitting all six questions for 11 points. The first time they've ever done that as a team. Now their team accuracy is at 79%, which makes it the fourth best accuracy rate amongst active teams. As for the Harris Brothers, this is their second straight loss decided by a knockout. As for Lon Harris, in five matches, he has earned seven or more points in the first round four times. And as for Jonathan Harris, he is averaging four and a half points in the first round. They now sit with a record of three and two. And since Jonathan Harris replaced JTE, they have an accuracy rate of 67%. If you want to find out other stats about this match and from around the league, check out SD Rundown Stats on Twitter. And don't forget to check out the Schmodown Rundown every weekend right here on the Movie Trivia Schmodown channel on YouTube. And also check it out on the Schmoes No podcast feed. This has been your Schmodown Breakdown.